<laughs> it's too much. What am I supposed to do with this? Why well, like things big here on Zorpazorp? Stupidly massive, some might say, but today, Games Workshop have really upped the ante again. Last November, GW sent me the biggest pile of plastic crack that I have ever seen. <sighs> including 100 sprues of the new Osgiliath ruins, and we made an absolutely mental piece of scenery. But as you all know, this massive Osgiliath flooded city layout does not stand alone. It is just a part of the biggest, baddest scenery project on YouTube, the Siege of Gondor Megaboard. This massive Lord of the Rings landscape spans from Osgiliath across the Pelennor all the way up to Minas Tirith, and we've been building it here on the channel for over three years with folks from all over the world helping us out, including a bunch of YouTubers. And when Games Workshop decided to bring out a brand new scenery kit for Minas Tirith, they asked me if I wanted any. Actually, no, I'm, I'm fine. I've got so much already. <laughs> Give me all the plastic. This ridiculous mountain of plastic here in front of me is 70 sprues of the new Gondor scenery, but I have a bit of a confession to make. The massive Osgiliath board we built with the last pile of plastic only used about two thirds of what GW sent us. So when we add the leftover Gondor ruins to what we have here, it's an even bigger pile of plastic than last time, and we are going to need it. We ain't building no ruins sunken city, we're building the largest city in all of Tolkien and the biggest wargaming board in YouTube history. It's time to build the white city of Minas Tirith in brand spanking new Games Workshop Plastic Crack. To build this mountain of plastic, we are doing something very special indeed, and heading out to one of the most beautiful places in all of Aotearoa, New Zealand, to build Minas Tirith in the very spot it was filmed by Peter Jackson as we continue our new series of building Middle Earth in Middle Earth. Today's incredible landscapes feature the stunning vistas of New Zealand's tallest mountain, the mighty Aura and the breathtaking Southern Alps. We will be crafting the White City surrounded by the White Mountains of Gondor, the Pelennor Fields, the River Anduin, and of course Mount Mindoluin, the home of the city of Minas Tirith. But before we go out into this stunning world of natural beauty, we need to prepare our mountain of plastic for assembly. Every single piece on our 100 sprues needs to be cut and cleaned and ready to use so that we do not leave a single molecule of Games Workshop plastic in the gorgeous wilderness of New Zealand. And to do that, I am going to need some help. So it's time to light the beacons of Minas Tirith, throw all the sprues in the car, and head to Christchurch, where some absolute legends of the New Zealand Middle Earth community are ready to help. Now, when we did the last Sprue Mountain video, I summoned my hobby mates in Australia, and we did like a whole let's meet the team section of the video. And I tried to film the same thing again, but Kiwis don't really do anything that an Aussie asks of them without a huge degree of uh, difficulty. Hi, I'm Matty. Can I have one of your fish? Stop ruining the takes, James. Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm James. No, you know, I am. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'm being kept against my will. <laughs> these guys, seriously. <laughs> All I want is them to say their names. Like, why is this so hard? Hi, right, I'm Stu. Did you hear that guy? That was, that was great. Look at that. One take wonder. You know what? Don't even worry about their names. All we need today is their hands. And as we dived into a whole bunch of deep chats about why Australia invented the pavlova, we began to tackle the towering piles of sprue before us and realized this was a whole lot more difficult than I'd initially expected. With two new kits, we've got a whole bunch of different types of sprues than the original Osgiliath ruins. And the really exciting parts, the these kits will add to our Minas Tirith building arsenal, the roofing, the stairs, the balustrades and the archways are insanely modular, which is going to be amazing for the actual crafting, but it means they come in a million little pieces, which takes a long time to prepare. Bit of a slight difference here in um, style of organisation, Stu. Looking good, looking good. To optimize our workflow, we got Maddie and Jack to focus on the 10 tower kits, which are way less modular, and they managed to cut, clean, and sort all of those pieces pretty quickly, while Stu, James, and I tackled the really tricky Gondor mansions, although it wasn't all smooth sailing for Team Tower. Our first injury, Maddie. Show us the damage. 
It's a vicious business, this. With the towers finished, we all focused on battling through the mansions together, and we opted on just getting it all completely unclipped, rather than cleaning as we went. It's almost lunchtime, we've had a big milestone here. We are about to finish clipping the final sprue. Obviously, we still have to clean everything, but let's have a look. Show us the final cut, the final snip. Oh, it's done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After a quick pie through the afternoon, we smashed another massive session. And I've got to say, these Kiwis gave my all-star Aussie de spruing team a real run for their money because we got a mental amount completed. But my work was not done because a few weeks earlier, I had realized that the huge amount of leftover pieces from the Osgiliath build were actually still in Australia. So it was time to send Ryan from Battlecraft Hobbies. Hey, I'm Ryan. If I roll a one, she's cool. On an absolute mission to wait through my jam-packed storage units, hunt down the Osgiliath sprues, and post them down to us. Oh, that unmarked plain cardboard box. What you just described is pretty much your entire storage unit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, yes, this looks good. Oh. Can you see ruins or, or clear white plastic boxes? I can, we've got clear white plastic boxes. Yes! Yes! Floors for days. We need floors for Minas Tirith. All of this? Yes, you are a god among men, Ryan. In a classic stroke of timing, the care package from Ryan was waiting for me on the doorstep when I got back from Christchurch, which meant I had to clean and sort all of these pieces myself. But we of course now have my handy sorting containers that we used last time, which needed a huge resort to accommodate all the different types of pieces from the new kits. So that is all of our pieces cleaned and sorted into tubs, which is going to be essential for being able to build efficiently out on location, because with the addition of the two new kits, there are so many different pieces. And this is a massive amount of plastic in front of me. So before we dive out to Gondor to build Minas Tirith, it's time to recruit a little bit more help. So I jumped back in the car and headed to Christchurch Airport to pick up another one of my Kiwi mates. Oh, look who's here, folks. Hey! Good morning, sir. Morning. You ready to uh, go to Minas Tirith? Oh, I sure am. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's all give a huge welcome to Adam from 3D Games Wargaming and Terrain, an awesome channel from right here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, who was mad enough to agree to two days up in the South Island wilderness, indulging my usual Zorpa Zorp madness. There they are, dude. The Misty Mountains. The Misty Mountains call. So we've just crested the beginnings of the Alps, and everything looks really great. The weather cleared, beautiful sun and some snow on the mountains. Uh, the, the rain and the fog is back. Maybe getting wet today. <laughs> Look at this fog. Those are the mountains right there. We are right here in the Pelennor. The white mountains of Gondor are all around us and the rain has set in. As we wound our way through the mist and the drizzle, we found a little stony four-wheel drive track just past the truss bridge marking the filming location that drove all the way down to the riverbed in the center of the Palenor Fields. Oh, we'll do anything to stay dry. <laughs> oh, look, look, look. That mountain there, that's that. Yeah. We are parked in front of Minas Tirith. <laughs> So that is Minas Tirith behind me, that gorgeous mountainscape. We are here in Gondor, ready to build Gondor, but it's pretty bloody wet and uh, we're not really going to be able to have camera gear out here for any sort of extended period. So we're going to swing the car around and see if we can get a nice backdrop from the safety of the back door and get crafting Minas Tirith in Minas Tirith. So we've got a bit of cover here from the roof. We're actually going to set the trestle table up uh, in the back of the car. So up first, we need to find our first building to make. I've got all of my stills here from the films and I've, I've zoned in on one building in the courtyard of Minas Tirith that we see with that scene where Faramir rides through. It's a pretty classic Gondorian building. It's fairly simple, but it might throw us a few challenges. So it's gonna be a great place to start but hobby challenges aren't the only thing on my radar at the moment. The big move to New Zealand has essentially functioned as a bit of a reset button for my work and family life and for my career here on Zorbazorb. And Skillshare is a fantastic way to gain greater control of your career and creative path. Now you might know Skillshare for their courses in film and video editing, but they have hundreds of career focused classes too. The new year is the perfect time to reinvent your goals and yourself. Zorbazorb was a huge career shift for 
me, and Skillshare gives me the power to keep reskilling as my industry and my needs change. With so much going on in life, time management and productivity has just been so key for me. So I've been checking out Ali Abdel's course, Productivity for Creators, and it's been so helpful. So jumpstart your 2023 goals now with this exclusive offer. Try Skillshare free for seven days, and then get 20% off your first year. So I began by diving into my hoard of plastic and grabbing some brand new pieces for the Gondor Mansion kit, some pre-made archways, and used them to map out the exact number of archers we see in the film on the primary structure of this two-stage building. I knew I'd need an exterior colonnade-lined balcony and then an internal wall to support the tiered roof structure, but of course, we need to get Adam to work as well. Okay, so Lockie's tasked me with a little secret project here in Gollum's cave, <laughs> and so we may just show you a a few little sneak peeks here and there while I secretly work on some plastic. Pretty sweet office for the day. With Minas Tirith behind us, we got Adam out of the glue fumes inside the RAV, and I jumped into the two most exciting components of the new kits, the roofing and stairwell systems. The modular roof tiles are incredibly flexible, and Ray has designed them perfectly to be able to sit up against the upper wall so that we can make this wraparound lower roof to match the building from the film reference. These are so, so cool. The way that they combine, connect together and pull apart, we're gonna be able to create some really modular, pretty massive buildings that might even have a touch of destructibility. No. That's not... There. Here comes the catapult. <laughs> Oh yeah, that works pretty well. <laughs> Destructibility. So now things rapidly started getting very complicated as I mapped out the floor plan of the first level, including the little tower section at the back of the main chamber, and then started working upwards, adding the first floor able to be reached by the rear stairwell, and then integrating that with our colonnade roofing. But in spite of how hard I started pushing these kits, I just kept finding all the right pieces to allow me to build anything I wanted. Look at that. Who thought I'd be so happy with a two centimeter strip of plastic? I only glued together some of the roof tiles as I'm hoping to do some pretty insane modular destructible elements, but for now we'll just focus on getting the intact structure fully finished. You finished your first assignment, I you've did. knocked up a couple I of did. towers. Yeah. I think he's ready to graduate guys to something a little bit more sophisticated, a nice big house. Okay. So here are your allocation of tiles. Uh, and a little, a few pieces of floor as well. Okay. If, you, if you can just knock those up into something for us, that'd be splendid. Okay, great. With the main chamber humming along nicely, I leapt onto the next level of the tower, which will eventually go hard up against the gatehouse of Minas Tirith, and will be a nice point of visual difference to the sloping roof line of the main building. So the bottom level of our building is coming together really nicely. This wraparound roof is awesome. I've got one more roof that needs to go in here. And just like our big Osgiliath sets, all of these are removable in modules. There's a lot more to do, upper level, some destructibility, but it is freezing. I want to say like maybe five degrees. My hands are like tight with the cold. So we're going to pack everything up, get back to the fire, and we're going to come right back tomorrow. We are snuggled down by the fire. It's time to try and knock off the last of today's builds. My goodness, the weather really needs to improve tomorrow because we haven't seen a fraction of the stunning landscapes that are supposed to be all around us in this series. We might as well have been crafting in a cloud. But tonight's first order of business is to cut and trim down the second little roof annex that attached to the tower and glue that all together as one solid first floor piece. Then with the ground level and first floor complete, I decided to work backwards, knocking off the roof first before building the second story of the first floor. Careful to only glue certain joins so that although this looks complete, I can pull it apart for a nice catapult impacted ruin later on. I also added a second stairwell to make the first floor much more playable, and then happy to have almost got this guy over the line, it was time for bed for hopefully an early sunny start tomorrow morning. We had beautiful sun through the first mountain range and now we're here at Lake Bukaki he's out the window but you can't see the weather is even worse than yesterday oh is it breaking i can see the lake there's water it's there look at that look at that we are yeah. totally going to come out of this look at oh, the oh, I stuff he 
he's smiling again. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sunshine on a rainy day. We have victory, the sun has come out this morning. Our Rocky shining high behind me, the White Mountains of Gondor. Let's go and craft Minas Tirith. My goodness, what a stunning, incredible landscape. It's pretty obvious why the Hooker Valley enchanted Peter Jackson and was used extensively throughout the Lord of the Rings as Gondor, the Pelennor, and even a little splash of the Anduin River and Osgiliath in a few composite wide shot plates, and then became a centerpiece location for The Hobbit, with Lake Pukaki starring as Lake Town and Alraki himself featured as the Lonely Mountain in certain shots. Breathe. That's the key! So with the tallest son of the Sky Father watching over us, Adam and I hiked into a little gorse thicket out of the wind and set up our first spot of the morning, although things rapidly took a turn for the worst. The gale blowing up the valley fiercely drenched us in the cloud that we'd been fleeing all morning. And these time lapses you're seeing of us working are once again just a wall of white where there should have been the most stunning backdrop. Just look at this hillside 10 minutes earlier when we filmed this arrival shot. And there should be beautiful mountains there, but there is not. With our hopes pinned on Tafili Matea's mercy, we ploughed on, and I found myself facing down yet another brand new set of pieces from these wonderful kits, the balustrades. These ornate little detail pieces were perfect to cap the roof of the tower structure. Not quite screen accurate, but close enough and just a stunning detail. I had to modify the roof panel made from floor tiles quite extensively to get it to sit in neatly with the roof on the main chamber, which I did by cutting inside a Ziploc bag to protect the wilderness around us. A few little detail pieces, finishing touches, and my first building is coming together. Adam, meanwhile, had begun a mega project of his own. How's it going there, dude? Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. Only on 3D games. <laughs> Even he's stealing it now. <laughs> well, in spite of the fog rolling in, I finished our very first building here, but the sun has come back back out we can see our Rocky still hidden but there are some mountains poking through and down the valley we are swathed in sunshine it's time to go and get a little closer to the slopes of Minas Tirith so that's where the backdrop was supposed to be for all of those time lapses you just watched good times good times <laughs> we're standing here and we are about to go to there Minas Tirith has come to Minas Tirith. So we have reached our final location for today's shoot. We are here in front of Minas Tirith. Min Dolwyn, the mountain is behind us. Right where we are now would be the gatehouse and we needed some reinforcements. So Bo has joined us. We're gonna smash through one last big mega build. And most importantly, Bodhi, what have you brought? Snack yeah. <laughs> well, Manwe and Tafili Matea have teamed up and delivered a beautiful blast of late afternoon sunshine as we smashed into this final crafting session, with Adam continuing his work on his own behemoth of a building, and Bo diving in with me to start on a brand new structure inspired by a new building from the courtyard of Minas Tirith, which would have been in the exact place we were sitting when the stunning bigature by Weta Workshop was composite into the landscape around us. I began experimenting with even more modular possibilities, as a big dream for me for this new city block is to be able to swap it between fully intact and partially damaged, so that when we play games on the board, we can have the scenery getting physically altered by the besieging forces. There was just something about crafting in such an immersive location that drove me to create a board that will be more immersive for gameplay than anything I've ever built before. Now I won't reveal here what absolute madness Adam from 3D Games Wargaming and Terrain has been up to throughout these few days of scenery insanity, but trust me, there has been some serious shenanigans that I haven't shown here. So make sure you head over to his video link down below and please subscribe. His channel is so damn awesome. Some gorgeous Middle Earth stuff and he is just criminally undersubscribed. So go and show him some Zorpa Zorp love. The weather has finally cooperated for our last couple of hours here in the plains of Gondor beneath the slopes of Auraki in the beautiful Southern Alps. 
We've done one last big building session. We've smashed out some buildings, but we're out of time. The sun's about to go down. We've got a big drive ahead of us, but before we make our journey home, there is one last thing to do. We are going to build Minas Tirith in Gondor. With the first few buildings slapped down in front of a gorgeous set of walls from my mate Andy Tucker, I think it's pretty safe to say that my appetite for continuing the massive Minas Tirith build with these new plastic kits is bigger than ever. And I'm just in love with what they can do. And we have barely scratched the surface of what these sets are capable of, which is handy, as I have a whole lot of them left over. We haven't even touched 10% of what's piled up in my studio. Remember to check out Adam's video linked in the comments and comment down below what location you'd like me to tackle in the next installment of Building Middle Earth in Middle Earth. We, we just, just built Minas Tirith on Minas Tirith. Thanks a lot, bro. Awesome. Anytime. <laughs>